A popular brand of surgical mess used to repair hernias has been found to cause dangerous problems in patients that have it implanted in their bodies. Uh, you know, you know what's so crazy about this story? This has been going on for so long. Johnson & Johnson, for example, knew that the material that was being used in, in mesh hernia material would cause a whole host of problems. First of all, it, it, would, it would migrate through the body. It would break away and these pieces of mesh would migrate through the body. Second of all, it would, it would not allow the site to even heal. The infections are overwhelming. The long-term problems and pain are overwhelming. The reason they know this is because four other companies had been making the same thing and four other companies had been sued for the same thing and that took place years ago. But Johnson & Johnson, just like Johnson & Johnson always does, says, well, you know, we're gonna do it anyway. It's just like, you know, the, the baby powder case. A friend of mine just hit him for four billion dollars in 22 cases of cancer. Uh, it, it, Johnson & Johnson always, always focuses on the bottom line, always to the detriment of consumers. You know, take, take it from here. I, I've actually, full disclosure, I've handled these cases. I know a lot about yeah. them. I know why the material is causing such danger, but go, go ahead and uh, talk about that. We know they, Johnson & Johnson, through their little subsidiary Ethicon, develop these polypropylene meshes, which as you said, other people had already had on the market. Johnson & Johnson wanted in on it because they saw that, hey, everybody else is making a ton of money. We need to develop a poly, uh, polypropylene mesh, even though we know they're getting sued. Don't worry, we're gonna make more money than they'll take from us in the courts. So they make it and sure enough, it causes migration. It causes uh, adhesion where, where it either, ad, uh, you know, basically becomes a part of the organ or it makes organs fuse together if they're touching with this mesh. It causes massive infections and horrid uh, in inflammation because of the chemicals in this polypropylene actually hinder the healing process. It makes it harder for the hernia to heal. And of course, doctors, anytime something like this comes out, unfortunately, these drug reps go out, they say, hey, we know you've been using these old meshes that have been perfectly fine, but here's something new. It's lighter, it's more flexible, it's gonna make your patients feel so yeah. much better. So use our mesh instead of the old things that have uh, okay, worked for so let long. Me, let me put this in perspective for you, okay. You're in a business and five, six years before, there are hundreds and hundreds of cases saying that this thing that you're about to put on the market will cause bad human injury. Now, for example, these were, if you can imagine, these were actually used for vaginal, there's a vaginal, vaginal mesh program. Now, we're talking about hernia mesh, which is the same material. It caused such injury inside a woman's uh, uh, vagina in the whole area around anywhere it touched. It caused these adhesions. It caused pain that was so bad that women had to basically have have hysterectomies, I mean radical hysterectomies, because the pain was so bad. As you said, the, the, the mesh would merge with other, other tissue, it would merge with other organs, and women died from this. And th there's no difference in the material we're talking about here, where they use this for small bowel resections, they use it for ventral hernia repair, they use it for bilateral uh, uh, tissue flaps, they use it for a whole host of things. Why do they use it? They use it because doctors who aren't really trained in some of these procedures can then say, well, I don't really need to have special training. I'll just use this mesh package that little Susie distributor, you know, shows up at the doctor's office with cupcakes. Doc, we got a new product. It's this mesh product. You can use it in surgery. You don't have to be a specialist. You can put this in anybody's body. It is a disaster. And Doc, who simply is looking at the business aspect of it, says, oh, that's great. I can do more procedures. I don't have to have special training because I have this package. It's the hernia package. It's the Johnson & Johnson hernia package that I can use every single day without special training. And in the meantime, they botch the process and hundreds of thousands of people all over the world are using these kinds of products and it's killing them. 
And Johnson and Johnson says, ah, that's okay. We can still turn a profit. Well, you know, that, that's a, here's a really good analogy, you know, for what you just said. It's basically the difference between going and hiring a master craftsman to make you a desk or going and buying a, a pre-boxed package desk with pieces one, two, three, four, five that comes with the instructions on how to put it together. You're going to get a lesser quality product, but it's cheaper and faster. And that's what these mesh kits are. It is a step-by-step -step paint by the numbers. Every hernia is the same. So don't worry about it. If you've never done one before, the instructions are basically on the back of the box. Right. Where, whereas in the past you would have a, a, a skilled surgeon go in, they wouldn't have to use these. They would, you know, get in there, repair the tissue. It would take a little bit longer. They couldn't do as many surgeries in the day. But when hospitals became all about profits, right. it was turn them and burn them. Get them in, get them out. Hospitals became a corporation, no longer doctor hospitals. It's no different than Exxon. It's just, they call it, it's a hospital, but it's a corporate hospital. Look, if you're told, listen to this, you're told, yeah, you can use this product, but you might want to know it can cause death. It can cause where it's, where it's put in, it'll, ta it'll cause death. It, it, that area to deform. It'll cause contact and migration with other organ systems that will cause failure of the organ systems. It will, uh, it'll induce adhesions that cause chronic and severe pain that we can't correct. But you know, you're welcome to use it. These are the types of things the patient doesn't know because the patient trusts the doctor. The doctor says, oh yeah, this is good stuff. And if they only understood how little the doctor really knows about it, especially the doctors who are using this stuff. Because well, these aren't doctors, as you say, these aren't, most of the time it's not like specialist craftsmen, surgeons who can solve this problem without hernia mesh, with any, without any kind of mesh. They can solve it without mesh. They can solve it with real tissue. But you know what? Every doctor can't do that. Therefore, you reduce the business that a doctor can do. A new environmental lawsuit has popped up in an attempt to stop the administration from selling off more of Gulf of Mexico for oil drilling. Okay. All right. So here we are. We live on the Gulf of Mexico in Pensacola, Florida. We've, we've seen what happens with BP. We have an entire ecosystem absolutely devastated that really hasn't recovered. You know, we, the best that we want to put a spin on it, it's recovered. Our tourism is an all time high. We're doing great. We're back. But if you go offshore far enough, you still see the remnants of this disaster. What's your take? Exactly. You know, it, it, it never ceases to amaze me when we see the federal government and we saw it during the Obama years. This is not something new. Well, we the, saw it with Bush. Yeah, we saw it with Clinton. We that, see it Obama. That we come through this massive disaster and we learn nothing from it. We're talking about 78 million additional acres that are up for lease right now. And who put them up for lease? The Trump administration? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is uh, Ryan Zinke, yeah. uh, Department of the Interior. Yeah. But in the media known as Stinky. Yeah. I mean, that's. Uh, that's what's even dumber <laughs> about this? <laughs> not my words. Yeah. That's, that's but, it. But they, yeah. they're trying to make it to where it's not necessarily the deep water, which was what Deepwater Horizon was. No, no, no. These are closer inland because yeah. they think for some reason that's safer. Now, could you imagine the if beach. we had the BP oil spill, but. It was you know, 10 miles beach. out yeah. from shore. Th this whole area would still be covered in oil, but they think it's smarter because it's not as deep. Yeah, their argument is we have less risk if, is the, the shallower we go. But if you've ever been to Pensacola or ever been to resort beach area and you understand that you can drive a couple of miles and see these oil derricks out there, yeah. you understand what the risk really is. It puts this community under huge risk. Tourism is the only way that we have to survive in this community. And there's a lot of communities around the country. Typically what right. you'll see is you'll see these beach communities also that you'll see military involved. You know, there'll be a military bases. They typically like to operate out of an area like this and resorts. You take the resort part of it away and it's Katie by the door. Sad part is this environmental lawsuit, they're gonna lose. They always lose, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a very tough road. Thank you for bringing it though. I mean, you yeah, know, they get to try. Every year, one million hernia surgeries are performed in the United States. Unfortunately, some mesh implants that are used in these surgeries have caused complications, including infection and organ damage that led to surgeries to correct those problems. If this has happened to you, learn more about the hernia mesh lawsuit by going online to hernia.law or call us for a free consultation about your legal rights.